Affinity Publisher allows you to open and edit PDF documents, allowing you to make changes to text, images, and vector content. To begin, I'll go to my file browser and locate the PDF I want to open. I'll then simply click drag the file into Publisher, releasing the mouse button to open the document. The PDF import dialog will appear, allowing us to configure how the document will be imported. With a multi-page document, you can choose to bring in all pages or a specific range of pages. For example, if I only wanted to bring in the first three pages, I could choose the option Load Pages and then type 1-3. But for this example, I want to import all of the pages in the document. So I'll once again select Load All Pages. The DPI and Color Space options will default to Estimate and this will be appropriate for most workflows as Publisher will infer both the color space and DPI from the original PDF data. You can override these options manually. For example, a PDF only containing vector content with no bitmap data will have no explicit DPI for Publisher to infer. In this case, you may wish to set the DPI value to an appropriate print resolution, such as 300. Overriding the color space may be desirable for some workflows. But do be aware that color and alpha renderings may differ if the source imagery has to be converted to the chosen color space. Additionally, I want to edit the text in this PDF, so I'll make sure to enable Favor Editable Text over Fidelity. I'll also leave Group Lines into Text Frames enabled. With these settings applied, I'll then click Open. Publisher will then import the PDF and explode its layer content into a layer structure for each spread meaning we can easily edit text and images. So we'll start by updating some text. We'll zoom in slightly to the left hand side. I'll double click to select this text, which will also select the text frame tool. And I can then change this text from feel the beat to feel every note. Notice the text exceeds the bounds of the frame. So I could then choose to extend the frame to make the text fit or select the text and on the context toolbar, change the text size. Similarly, I could scroll down to this text frame here and adjust its text, changing 75 to 32. We can also make some adjustments to the vector content in the PDF. So I'll switch to the node tool, select this triangle logo here, and then we can adjust these nodes slightly to reveal the lighter gradient of the shape below. Zooming out slightly, I can see that the right hand page here is quite text heavy. So I think I'll swap out the last text frame on this page for another image. I'll start by deleting the last text frame. And to do this, we'll switch to the move tool, which is V on the keyboard, select the last text frame and press delete. I'll then place an image by going to file and choosing place. I'll locate my image and choose Open. I can then single click to place the image and use the Move tool to reposition the image and adjust its scale. Finally, I can change the colors of this page by using an adjustment layer. I'll make sure I have no layers selected by pressing Escape, and then I'll go to Layer, New Adjustment, HSL. I can then adjust the Hue Shift slider until I find a new color combination that I think works well with the document. I'll close the adjustment dialog for now, but this change is non-destructive. If I decide I want to revert the color change, I can hide the adjustment layer on my layers panel and return the PDF to its original colors. Or I can show the adjustment again, click on the layers thumbnail and modify the colors by changing the hue shift slider again. I can also import pages from another PDF and insert them into this document. So to do this, I'll go to Document and choose Add Pages from File. I'll locate the PDF I want to import the pages from and I'll choose Open. The Add Pages from dialog will appear and I can select the number of pages I want to import. In this instance, I want to import all of the pages, but I could choose to import a range of pages or a specific section of the document instead. Using the options below, we can choose where to insert and position the new pages. So I'll make sure we have After selected, Pages rather than Sections, and I want to insert this page after page 6. I'll then click OK, and we can see that Publisher has automatically imported the pages from the PDF into my current document. 
Once I'm happy with the changes that I've made to the PDF, I could either save the file as a native Affinity Publisher file, or I could choose to re-export the file as a PDF by going to File and selecting Export. I'll choose PDF as the export format from the drop-down menu, and I can then also modify the export settings explicitly or change the presets here. In this case, the file is going to be printed, so I'll leave the preset set to PDF for print. But if I wanted to export for digital purposes, I could select PDF Digital High Quality. I also want to make sure that in my advanced settings, that the embed font option is set to all fonts. Choosing this option will maintain the text in the PDF, exporting the text as editable text rather than curves. Once I'm happy with my settings, I can select Export, I'll rename the file, and choose where I'd like to export the file to. We'll then click Save. And there we go, that was how to open, edit and re-export PDF documents in Affinity Publisher. Thank you for watching.